Hello all. Today we will be covering control. What is the concept of control? Actually management seeks to achieve organizational goals through people in a dynamic environment and with constrained resources as we know it. After the plans are put into action, there can be several hurdles in the achievement of these goals. Results may fall short of the targets. Direction may be faulty or environmental conditions may bring surprises. You never know that. Therefore, management must find out what is going wrong, what changes in its plans and directions are required and what must be done to set things right. This all is the function of control. So, the term control has different connotations depending upon the context of the use of the term. In manufacturing, it refers to a device or mechanism installed or instituted to guide or regulate the activities or operations of an apparatus, machine, purpose, person or system. In law, it refers to controlling interest and in management as an authority to order and manage the workings and management of an entire entity. So, control is a management process to aim at achieving defined goals within an established timetable and comprises of three components. One, setting of standards. Two, measuring actual performance. And three, of course, taking corrective action. So, controlling is the process of ensuring that activities are producing the desired results. Now, what are the characteristics of control? So, there are many characteristics. The first being control is a managerial process. Management process, as we know, comprises of planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling. Thus, Control is a part of the process of management. Then, control is forward-looking. What is that? Whatever has happened has happened and the manager can take corrective action only of the future operations. Past is relevant to suggest what has gone wrong and how to correct the future. So, always you would be uh, controlling the future past is past it's gone so you cannot control it possibly but what risk remains in future can be controlled and hence it is forward looking control exists at each level of organization so it's not that that at planning control cannot happen at directing or organizing control cannot happen at every stage you can have some level of control that can be there so anyone who is a manager has to involve into control. It can be the chairman, it can be the managing director, it can be CEO, departmental head, first line manager, superintendent. All these people can exercise control and can be controlled as well. However, at every level, the control will differ. So top management would be involved in strategic control, middle management, at tactical control and lower level into operational control. Then control is a continuous process. Controlling is not the last function of management, but it is a continuous process. Control is not a one-time activity, but a continuous process that will go on. The process of setting these standards needs constant analysis and revision depending upon external forces, plans and internal performances. So, um, as long as organization exists, some sort of control is always required. Something like just as the navigator continuously takes reading to ascertain whether he is uh, relative to a planned course, so should the business manager continuously should be taking readings to assure himself that his enterprise is uh, or, or his department is on the right course. So control is dynamic process and it is not at all static. Then uh, we come to control is closely linked with planning. Without planning, nothing can happen, right? 
so you have to plan it accordingly planning and controlling are closely linked the two are rightly called as siamese twins of management every objective every goal every policy every procedure and every budget becomes standard against which actual performance can be compared planning sets the ship's course and controlling keeps it on the course when the ship begins to veer off the course the navigator notices it and recommends a new heading design to return the ship to its proper course uh, once control process is over its findings are integrated into planning to prescribe new standards for control now purpose of controlling is goal oriented and hence positive fundamentally control is any process that guides activity towards predetermined goals in essence um, it is determining whether the activity is achieving the desired results or not thus control is not an end in itself but a means to achieve desired objectives so control is there because without it the business may go off the track the controlling has positive purpose both for the organization to make things happen and individuals to give up a part of their independence for the attainment of organizational goals the process of control now uh, there are certain steps uh, which we have to follow in order to exercise control the first is establishing the standards first of all we would be establishing what kind of standards are there against which we would be comparing our actual performance right so within an organization's overall strategic plan manager defines goals for organizational departments in specific precise operational terms that include standards of performance to compare with organizational activities however for some of the activities these standards cannot be specific and precise standards again which actual performance will be compared may be derived from past experience statistical methods benchmarking Uh, based upon best industry practices you can set standards as far as possible the standards are developed bilaterally rather than top management deciding it unilaterally keeping in view the organizational goals now standards may be tangible clear concrete specific and generally measurable numerical standards monetary physical and time standards and intangibles relating to human characteristics desirable attitudes high morale ethics and cooperation all these uh, can be used uh, for setting up standards then the second step measuring actual performance once the standards are set now there would be actual performance which we would measure and then compare it with the standards so most organizations prepare formal reports of performance measurements both quantitative and qualitative where quantification is not possible that the managers review regularly then they would be taking the qualitative ones these measurements should be related to the standard set up in the first step of the control process for example if sales growth is a target the organization should have a means of gathering and reporting sales data data can be collected through personal observation through management by walking around the place where things are happening statistical reports made possible by computers oral reporting through conferencing one to one meeting or telephone calls written reporting comprehensive and concise accounting information normally a combination of all of these now to be of use the information flow should be regular and very timely then comparing the performance with the standards once you have established standards you have uh, you have your actual performance then you will compare both this step compares actual activities to performance standards when managers read computer reports or walk through their plans they identify whether actual performance meets exceeds or falls short of standards Now, typically, performance reports simplify such comparison by placing the performance standards for the reporting period 
alongside the actual performance for the same period and by computing the variance that is the difference between each actual amount and the associated standards. The manager must know of the standard permitted variation both positive and negative. Management by exception is most appropriate and practical to keep insignificant deviations away. Timetable for the comparison depends upon many factors including importance and complexity attached with the importance and complexity. Then next, taking corrective action and reinforcement of successes. When performance deviates from standards, managers must determine what changes, if any, are necessary and how to apply them. So without that, the entire procedure falls short. In the productivity and quality centered environment, workers and managers are often empowered to evaluate their own work. After the evaluator determines the cause or cause of deviation, he or she can take the fourth step and that is corrective action, which is absolutely necessary and for which this entire procedure was built up at the first place. Now the corrective action may be to maintain status quo, that is the reinforcing successes. Now that is whatever was happening and whatever standard was made if the corrective action brings to the actual performance to the standard then it is good then correcting the deviation is another part that you would focus on where did we go wrong and you'll change that or changing the standards now maybe if if the events have changed the times have changed there are new circumstances there are new environments and hence you cannot bring your actuals anyways to the standards hence the standards can be changed also so the most effective course may be prescribed by policies or may be best left up to employees judgment and initiative the corrective action may be immediate or basic that is the modifying the standard itself now we come to importance of control it guides the management in achieving predetermined goals all we know is that we have predetermined goals of the organization and control makes them more achievable so the continuous flow of information about project keeps the long range of planning uh, on the right track it helps in taking corrective actions in future if the performance is not up to the mark it ensures effective use of scarce and valuable resources with the control we would be meeting our standards well and the standards are very efficient uh, as in terms of uh, utilizing the limited resources hence the control system helps in improving organizational efficiency Various control devices act as motivators to managers. The performance of every person is regularly monitored and any deficiency present is corrected at the earliest. Controls put psychological pressure on persons in the organization. On the other hand, control also enables management to decide whether employees are doing right things or not. Then it facilitates coordination. Control helps in coordination of activities through unity of action. Every manager will try to coordinate the activities of his subordinates in order to achieve departmental goals. Similarly, the chief executive also coordinates the functioning of various departments. The control acts as a check on the performance and proper results are achieved only when activities are coordinated. It leads to delegation and decentralization of authority when the control will happen at every level. So there is some amount of authority you have to give people to control it at all levels, right? So it means decentralizing. So a decision about follow-up action is also facilitated. Control makes delegation easier and better also. Decentralization of authority is necessary in big enterprises. The management cannot delegate authority without ensuring proper control. The targets or goals of various departments are used as control techniques. Various control techniques like budgeting, cost control, pre-action approvals, etc. allows decentralization without losing control over activities. 
um, then spare stop management or concentrate on the policy making. For control processes, management's attention is not required every now and then. So the management by exception enables stop management to concentrate on the policy form uh, formulation. Now we come to certain control techniques. The first ones are financial controls. Finance is related with mobilization of funds and their utilization and return on them. Financial control is exercised through what are the financial statements? Income statement, balance sheet, profit and loss account, right? And statement of changes in financial position. So income statement, it tells about the expenses, segment incomes, overall incomes and expenses and net profit and loss. And balance sheet, it shows the net worth at single point in time and the extent to which the debt or equity finances the assets. Then through financial audits, you can control. So financial audits, either internal or external, are conducted to ensure that the financial management is done in line with the generally accepted policies, procedures, laws, and ethical guidelines. Audits may be internal by organization's own staff or external statutory audits by chartered accountants. And also there are management audits which are done by the experts. Ratio analysis. You all know there are so many ratios uh, which we calculate to see the leverage ratio, the debt coverage ratio. So there are so many ratios which can actually uh, you can keep calculating them to understand how is the performance of organization happening. Then budgetary controls. Budgetary control is the process of constructing budgets comparing actual performance with the budget one and revising uh, budgets or activities in the light in, uh, of change conditions. Budgetary control is such not related only to finance area but all functional areas to take help of budgetary control. Budget helps not only in planning but also helps to keep a tab on overall spending. Budget may be top down. Managers prepare the budget and ask subordinates to use. Bottoms up. Figures come from lower levels and adjusted at upper levels. Zero base. Justify the allocation of funds on the basis of activities or goals and flexible budgeting that is varying standards and varying allocations so next is break even analysis it is a tool of profit planning and deals with cost volume profit analysis and relationships that is cvp analysis then accounting Accounting includes responsibility accounting, cost accounting, standard accounting, standard cost approach, direct costing and marginal costing. Then we have marketing controls. What are marketing controls? In the field of marketing, to see that customer gets the right product at the right price at the right place and through right communication. The control is exercised through the following First is market research. It is to assess customers needs, expectations and the delivery and the competitive scenario. Then test marketing to assess consumer acceptance of new product. A small scale marketing is done. HUL uses Chennai for most of its test marketing. Marketing statistics. So marketing managers control through marketing ratios and other statistics. Then human resource control. Human resource control is required to have a check on the quality of new personnel and also to monitor performances of existing employees so as to determine firm's overall effectiveness. Goal setting, instituting policies and procedures to guide them are to help them. Common controls include performance appraisals, disciplinary programs, observations and the development assessments. Information control. All organizations have confidential and sensitive information to be kept as a secret. How to control access to computer database is very important. This has become a key contemporary issue in control. 
organizations keep a watch on employees computer usage in general and internet in particular then we have production control to ensure quality production in right quantities at right time economically uh, production controls are required two of the important techniques include inventory control that is abc analysis economic order quantity just in time inventory control and quality control through inspection statistical quality control etc then we have project control network analysis is most suitable for the projects which are not routine in minimizing cost in completing project well in time network analysis make use of two techniques program evaluation and review technique that is perk and critical path method that is cpn which we would be doing in the next session now the interrelationship between planning organizing directing and controlling the process of planning organizing directing and controlling resources is to achieve specific goals a plan enables you to take your business concept beyond the idea stage it does not however get the work done you have to organize things if you want your plan to become a reality you have to put people and other resources in place to make this happen and because your note taking venture is supposed to be better off with you in charge you need to be a leader who can motivate your people to do well finally to know whether things are in fact going well or not you'll have to control your operations that is measure the results and compare them with the results that you laid out in your plan so everything starts from planning goes through organizing directing and controlling to give you your desired results in planning they set goals and determine the best way to achieve them in organizing they allocate resources people equipment and money to carry out the company's plans directing is the process of providing focus for employees and motivating them to achieve organizational goals and controlling involves comparing actual to expected performance and taking corrective action when necessary now what is the relationship between planning and controlling planning and controlling are interrelated to each other planning sets the goals for the organization and controlling ensures their accomplishment planning decides the control process and controlling provides sound basis for the planning in reality planning and control both are dependent on each other so according to niles control is an aspect and projection of planning whereas planning sets the course control observes deviations from the course and initiates actions to return to the chosen course or to an appropriately changed one so there are various um, points the relationship between planning and control can be explained by the first is planning originates controlling in planning the objectives or targets are set in order to achieve this target control process is needed so planning precedes control you cannot control first and then plan controlling sustains planning so controlling directs the courses of planning controlling spots the areas where planning is required in future so controlling provides information for planning in controlling the actual performance is compared to the standards and records the deviations if there are any so the information collected from exercising control is used for planning further planning and controlling are interrelated planning is the first function of management as we all know the other functions like organizing staffing directing are organized for implementing the plans only control records the actual performance and compares it with the standards set in case the performance is less than that of standards set then deviations are ascertained proper corrective measures are taken to improve the performance in future 
planning is the first function and control is the last one as we know but then it's a continuous process because after control you will find out and take the corrective actions and would help this this analysis of comparing the standards with actuals is going to make your future planning better so both are dependent upon each other planning and control are both are forward looking we have seen about control that you can only make uh, uh, you know control the future not the past similarly you can only make plans for future not for the past so planning and control are concerned with the future activities of the business planning is always for future and control is always always forward looking so no one can control the past it is the future which can be controlled planning and controlling are concerned with the achievement of business goals the combined efforts are to reach maximum output with minimum of the costs both systematic planning and organized controls are essential to achieve the organizational goals thank you so much